today we are doing a landscape painting trying to put together a lot of the concepts we've already learned. So I'm right now just waking up my paints, giving each one a little drop of water so they're ready to go whenever I reach for them. This is just going to be a generic little sunset over the water painting. To start, we are going to start with a wet on wet sky, which we already have experience doing. Most of this will actually be review. So for the sky, I wanted to take up about half of my paper. I'm going to start at the middle and work my way up. Because with the sunset, we think of the sun going down, and so your lighter, brighter colors, for example, yellows and oranges, are going to be down near your horizon line. And we always start using the lighter colors. If I started with blue up here and tried to work down to yellow, I'm going to have a really hard time getting to yellow because blue will just take over so quickly. While my paint is still wet, I'm going to get in there right away and start just letting some yellow bleed around in that water. And I want it to be pretty light at the bottom, not like a real bright, bright yellow. I'm going to work my way up here. And since we have a lot of colors to choose from, I'm going to go ahead and grab that yellow orange. Start and let that bleed around a little bit. I'm going to keep going up and move into pink, maybe a darker orange. But before we get any further, I want you guys to stop for a second, grab a paper towel and squeegee out or dry out a little spot in the center. I want to leave a little bright white blurry spot like that. It's going to sort of feel like the sun going down right there. You know when the sun is so bright you can't even look at it? I had to do that while the paint was still wet. So I'm going to kind of fix that up a little bit and keep going. So working up the page, adding more colors to this. Whoa, that got really orange really fast. No big deal. I'm just going to take my brush, water it down, move it around. A little more water. I'm going to keep working up to the top of the page, mixing my colors. I really like to see some pink and some blue in this scene. So I'm going to grab some of this red, some nice pink in the sky, right? Add a little water to that and that red looks more like a pink. And I'm going to grab this as well for some nice bright color and move into a dark blue at the top of the page, nice pure blue. satisfied with the colors in my sky. Let's talk about my sky for a second. I used a technique called lifting to pull that little white spot back out of my sky. If you forgot or it didn't work, no big deal. I was also struggling with water pooling. I have kind of a, a dip that's happening right here. My paper has warped. With a sky, with water, it's okay. Consider it happy accidents. You'll notice that I turned my paper a little bit. I was also wiping my brush and using it to sort of lift. That's another lifting technique, lifting moisture back up off my paper. And at one point I even painted blue here by accident. My brush wasn't very clean. Again, happy accident. Added some more water to it, moved it around a little bit to blend it away. And it just seems like a natural streak in the sky. Skies are a lot of fun because they're not perfect. I want to do the water next. So this is gonna be a sunset scene over a lake. Same concept. We are doing wet on wet. I don't really want this to bleed together so I'm kind of carefully leaving a little white area here. I get asked all the time, how do you paint water? It's clear. I don't have clear paint to add to my paper. Water is really just a reflection of whatever is above it. So in this case we have a beautiful sunset. It is being reflected in the lake water. So always look at something like water and think, not clear, what is it reflecting? What colors do I see? So we're basically gonna do our sky in reverse here. I like to be a little more intense with this yellow, gives me more interest in the painting. I started with water on the paper if you hadn't noticed, so I'm doing a wet on wet technique again. And I'm gonna take those same colors and I'm going to pull down this direction towards the bottom of the paper. One thing I want you to notice as I work, I will be stopping and lifting again right through this section here to look like a reflection of that sun going down. So I'm going to take my paper towel, my actually I have an actual towel, and try to lift a little bit as I go along. 
I'll just keep touching it up like that as I work down the paper. If my colors don't match perfectly, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. But again, I'm going back and using that yellow orange, which I've already used. It's bleeding together, which I think is interesting. If you don't like that, just keep pushing that water around. I can move it down this way on the paper if that's making you unhappy or not liking the way it looks. some purple right now. I'm going to take a teeny smidge of black to that too. Whoops, black is strong, my goodness. Let me try that over here now. I'm going to take a little of that and move it here. Try that purple in there again so I didn't end up with black. And again, I'm moving along. I'm like making a value scale on my palette. I wanted to give just a little watery shadow up here on the sides of the painting. So while that paint is still wet, adding just a little water down, really light. Always check your paint. If you're not sure, you're not confident, check that on a sketchbook page or a piece of scratch paper. I just added a little shadow in there, a little purpley shadow. I'm going to add it a little bit more too here. Let that kind of pull across that water. That's going to sort of read like the land above it is casting a shadow down here. Now that one streak got a little darker than I intended it to, so I'm going to dry my brush, see if I can lift it back out. Look how that lightened just by doing that, and then I can just take some water, make sure the brush isn't too dirty, and just sort of smear it around a little bit more. And again, if you don't like that, if you're like, oh man, I missed my bright yellow, take the yellow and go over it again. You'd be surprised how much you can work with this. Okay, I let this dry, feels pretty good. Now we're going to add our little mountains, the edge of the lake. Make sure your black is good and wet so it's really strong and dark. Check it on your palette, that looks like a good black ink almost. We need to make sure our mountains are tiny. Don't give me big mountains. Imaginary draw for a second with your fingertip. They should be no taller than this. It's almost just a wiggly line going across the page. So I'm going to start with sort of a horizon line right at the top of my lake water. And then we'll be building up from there. As I noticed the color when it went across it was very black, it got thinner here. It means I need to just pick up a little more black on my brush. Take that to the edge of the paper. Now I'm going to go back, start at the beginning. And remember, it's not big. Just going to do my little I like to make sure the mountains stay low in the middle there so that we can make it obvious. There's a reason the sun is reflecting on the water. For interest, as I come over to the side here, I'm going to bring my mountain scene down a little bit lower. And I'm going to add some trees over on the side here. Now we already know how to paint trees in case you've forgotten. I'm going to just go like this. Little straight lines. These are tiny. Make sure they vary. I'm going to take that black and I'm just going to do uh, it looks like a wiggle down the side of the page. So I've got the straight line and then a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You could almost just sort of dot at the paper. Thank you. 
Time for the last part of our techniques here. We're gonna give the water some texture. To give it texture, we're gonna do what's called a wet on dry technique. So the paper is dry. I'm gonna put wet paint on top of that. That's wet on dry. To do the wet on dry, what I wanna do here is take some of this purpley color I already made over here. Make sure it's really watered down. And then I'm gonna draw horizontal lines going across the page, just little ripple effect. I like to have a little bit more up here. Oops, that's almost too thin. I'm gonna add some more color to that. I like a purpley black. You could also do a blue black. Make sure it's not too wet. You don't wanna be sloppy with your brush. Use the tip of the brush and just create some lines. Notice I kind of want a lot up here near the mountains. I'm trying to show what's being reflected in the water. I'm not gonna have a lot of them right here down the middle where we worked hard to create that light area. These are a little too light for me, so I just added a little more purple to my color here to make it just a touch darker, especially as I come down into my darker colors over here. Vary your lines. Notice I just kinda keep moving my brush and let it sort of skitter across the page. Sometimes I'll get a short mark, sometimes I'll get a long mark. Most important is that they're fairly thin up near the top of your picture because at the top, the water is farther away from you. Those ripples are harder to see. As we come down here, we're gonna get a little thicker with our lines, with the marks that we're making because the water is getting closer to us, which means we can see that better. So that needs to give perspective to this little piece of art. We need to get something a little bit bigger as it gets closer to us. And I'm just sort of skittering across the page here. I'm gonna make this color a little bit darker as I get into that darker water. It's okay if it's a little scribbly. I wanna remind you guys of something. This is supposed to be a painting, not a photograph. It's okay if it shows your brush strokes or a little scribble or the paint didn't blend perfectly. That is what gives it interest. So never be too hard on yourselves. I'm darkening my color again, a little heavier down here at the bottom. I'm gonna work to the other side now and work up. area we can't just have none so I am gonna go back and give a little bit I'm just making sure it's not as many and that little ripple mark there it seems lonely to me so I'm gonna give it a couple around it so it doesn't seem so odd so I think I'm gonna add more to it Maybe with a fatter brush stroke. So it almost blends in with the color of water. I'm gonna pick up some of that blue that I was using earlier. Cause it kind of matches the water and add some more in here to sort of blend. So notice I'm using a really watery color and I'm just blending that in cause it kind of just seems like a big pattern right now and that's not good. So just kind of blending away, adding a thicker, waterier brush stroke in here to make that work better. That seems like it has more depth, more reflection to it, in my opinion. I also notice as I do this painting, I've worked the edges a lot darker, more ripples, more pigments, more shadows, all of it. And I like that so much, I'm gonna do more. Okay, we're not quite done yet. We have one more thing we need to add to this painting. I wanna make sure for interest and to make it seem more realistic, we're gonna add a reflection of these trees. So back to my watery color, I'm gonna start with some lines coming down that sort of match those. They don't have to be perfect. And after those lines, I'm gonna add a few extra marks in there. If those are watery, blowing them for a second, Mine were a little on the wet side. 
I'm gonna add some extra cross hatch marks in there for those trees to really make sure it looks like the reflection of the trees in the water. It's okay if they're not perfect because it's rippling water, no big deal. Mm -hmm. 